I'm going to start to build my app with the backend because I'd like to get that done first. If I want to start from scratch, then the first thing I do is downloading Node because the backend of the Mern stack apps is based on that. After that, I will set up a local server and install a package called NodeMod that will restart the server every time I save my code. And then I will start routing, create a local array of objects, which will simulate a MongoDB collection. And I will start to fetch local data, first multiple objects, then only one defined by the object ID. I'm going to start by setting up a local server for which the very first step would be downloading Node. I'm on nodejs.org where I can download the newest version of Node.js. Here LTS stands for long term support and as you can see this is recommended for most users. I already installed Node so when I open my terminal I can check if Node is really there by typing node-v. This should return a version number and not with an error. And same with npm, Node Package Manager, which is supposed to come with Node.js together. Then I create a new folder where the app will be stored. I call it Mern Fruits. I go into that folder and then if I type code dot, then my code editor, the VS code will open. Okay, then in order to start a project, I type npm init in the terminal, which will create a package.json file that will store the package dependencies and a few other infos that will be useful later. I press enter here several times, but when it's asking for the entry point, I type server.js, which will be the name of my first file on the backend. I will have two main folders, backend and frontend, and since I'm going to start with the backend, I first create the backend folder, and inside of that folder, I create the server.js file, and that's where I will need to start the local server. In order to do so, I need to install the express package. So back in the terminal, I type npm install express, the express package will be installed, which I can see by taking a look at the package.json. There is a new dependency created there. To actually test it, I will launch the local server. And to see how that's done, I can go to the expressjs.com, where they wrote a hello world code to get started. So I can just copy and paste it into my server.js file, and I can have an idea what it's doing. The first line, it imports the express package. Here it's creating the express app by setting it to the app variable. Then it's creating a new variable for the port number, which I will set to 5000 instead of 3000, because the default value of the create react app later on the front end has also 3000 as default value. And then this app.get will refer to a backend route. Res.send is the response of the server to the request of the browser. And app.listen will take the port number as the first argument and the function as the second one, which in this case will display a short message on the terminal. Now that sounds great in theory, but let's actually see how it looks like. To start the local server, I type node backend slash server in the terminal, which will run the server.js file inside of the backend folder. It will display this example app listening here in the terminal. And for the hello world message, which is generated after sending a get request to the server, I need to go to the browser and type localhost colon 5000, which refers to the port number. And what I see here is the response of the server after receiving a GET request on the root endpoint, which is represented by this single forward slash. The response will be in JSON format later, but as you can see, a string is working as well. Before getting any deeper, I want to install another npm package called nodemon. So in the terminal, I type npm install nodemon. This is a package that will automatically restart the server when I save the project. Without this, every time I make a change in the backend, I would need to go to the terminal and restart the server manually, which would always look the same, so having a package that does it for me is quite convenient. In order to use it, I go to the package.json and create a script for starting the server. Server nodemon backend slash server. And now if I simply type npm run server in the terminal, this script will run. So this is another feature of the package.json file. Okay, let's try it out. In the terminal, I type npm run server, then I can check the localhost 5000, and I see the hello world. If I change it to hello world and save it, go back to the browser and refresh, then I see the new message. And again, without this nodemon package, I would have to stop the server in the terminal and then start again. And I think this way is better, so that's why I'm going to use nodemon. Once this is done, it's time to spend some time with the backend routes or endpoints. I already have one, the slash. The get here refers to the HTTP method that comes from the browser on the front end. 
If it's not get, it's usually post, put or delete, but those will come later. The first parameter is the URL, and the second parameter is the function that will be called. It's usually sending something back to the browser using this response object. So let's create another app.get method. This time the URL will be slash fruit. That's because I'm going to store fruits in the database, and fruit is a fitting name for that. And first it will send just a message. Here will be the fruit. And I don't need to restart the server, thanks to the Nodemon. I can just enter the URL in the browser and I see the new message. So this endpoint can handle different HTTP methods, not only GET, and I can implement a different function depending on what kind of HTTP method arrives from the front end. But without connecting to a database, which I will do in the next video, I cannot really test any other methods than this GET. Then I want to take one step in the direction of databases before actually using databases. So I'm going to create a new file in a new folder called data, and I call it fruits.js. And this file will consist of an array of objects, each object representing a fruit having an ID, a name, an amount, and an additional info. I use underscore before the ID because that's what MongoDB is doing. So the fruit number one will be apple, the amount of the apples will be two, and the apple info will be pink lady, which is a kind of apple. The second one will be banana, only one, and extra info is yellow gentleman, which could be probably a kind of banana. Finally, the third one is carrot. There will be five carrots, and the info will be not a fruit. That's three fruit objects, and I need to connect this JSON file with the server.js somehow. And one way it can be done in Node.js is that I need to export it here and require it back in the server.js. So I have to add module.exports equals fruits, which is the name of the variable, and then on the top of the server.js I import it with const fruits equals require, and then the relative path, which in this case is starting from the same folder, going into the data folder, and then grabbing the fruits file. I don't need to add .js at the end, since that's the default option. And then if I go to the get fruits method, instead of the text message, I can call a res.json method with the argument of the newly imported variable called fruits. And then back in the browser, I can see the list of those three fruits here. Although this might not be too convincing, it could also be just a simple string and would look the same. So I'm going to demonstrate how the fruits variable can be used as more than just a text file. So I will try to pick just one of the fruits from the array. I create one more app.get method, but this time the URL will contain something special, namely this column ID at the end. This is a parameter that can change, and the way I can grab it on the server side is by using the rec for request.params.id. Now I go to the browser. If I type 1 in the URL after the fruit slash, it will display 1, and if I type 2, it will display 2, and so on. If I want to display one of the objects from the fruits variable, I create a new variable and I find the one with the proper ID by using the find method. What this find method does is that it will pick the object with the same ID as the one arriving from the URL and returns it in JSON format. And now again, if I type 1, it will display the fruit with the ID 1, the apple. If I type 2, it displays the second fruit and if I type random things, it won't find anything for which I could use error handling, but I won't do it for now. As I said, get requests are quite easy to test with the local variable, but as for post, put and delete, the three other very common HTTP methods, it's worth to actually create a database and connect it to the backend. And that's what I'm going to do in the next episode.